Good evening, family. This is Ray Goyasso, and you're watching and listening to the Found in Translation talk show. The talk show that stacks truth about politics and today's hottest issues. Thank you so much for joining us. I know we're still getting our getting our breath from the fantastic 70th anniversary celebration, which we're going to talk about a little bit in the show. We got we got to reflect a little bit about an epic Found in Translation we had last week. A two-hour special. If you haven't seen it, check it out on our YouTube page. And of course, we're leading up to Mother's Day week and one of the, our favorite holidays of the year. So we're definitely going to, this show's also going to be a celebration in many ways, but also very informative to discuss Mother's Day, the ongoing COVID-19 crisis, and just talk about how a great time we had last week on Found Translation. Of course, my co-host was with me as always, Zulai Piccarelli. Zulai, welcome back to Found Translation. Hi, Ray. Hi, everyone. Good, good evening. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling well. I know I already told you this, but I love your new background. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, a little behind the curtain here on Found Translation. I have moved my palatial studio into another wing of the Goyaso compound. Uh-huh. So the lighting's a little better. I've got a nicer setup here. I'm very excited about it. Uh, maybe one day I'll give you all a little sneak peek, you know, MTV crib style. Yes, where but, the uh, happens. Zulai, I know that, uh, first of all, how are you doing? And I know we're still kind of catching our breath. Last week was very special. That was so much fun. Thank you so much for putting all that together. It was such a great event, and so many people came out in support of Found in Translation, and it was beautiful, beautiful to be a part of. We had a lot of fun, and uh, I think, I mean, there's so much to take away from it, but I think the the biggest thing that I got out of it was such a great sense of satisfaction because not only was I, it, it, you have to understand, it's it's, it's the ultimate showing off for me in a sense, because mm. I know all these, these are not strangers. Well, Quan, I guess for me, but he's not a stranger to you. You know, he's the only performer I didn't know well. And the performers, the guests, they're not only incredible people, but they're my buddies. And, you know, they're people that are part of my social network, my family, literally and figuratively. And so it was great to show them all off. It was a lot of fun, including you, Zulai. I, I knew you were going to step it up, but I must say you really stepped it up the other day. You have a very nice voice. Thank you. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. A nervous wreck, but a lot of fun. Yeah, I can imagine. There was a lot going on. I wanted to mention we're going to be shouting out our contrib- our, our performers and our guests throughout the show. Um, and you're going to be seeing these people. I made a commitment with these people on there. They're going to be coming back on the show. You're going to be seeing a lot of the performers, including you, of course, Ulai, who's a regular, um, coming back on the show for longer segments. Not only will they perform, but we're going to have them talk about their art and get them with other entertainers. I want to shout out the sort of uh, emerging Hurricane Espanol group of the moment, making movies. So my homies too. So they wanted to come on the show. These are guys that are Nemi, Grammy nominated, and they also have become kind of the young boys for Ruben Blades. So they're doing a lot of collaboration with Ruben, and who, of course, I don't have to explain, that's the legend right there, the goat of, of Latin tropical music. And so they're really on the come up, great guys and uh, good friends. And uh, so they're going to be coming on the show sometime this month so look out for that so you're gonna have a lot more entertainers a lot more a lot more diversity in the show which i know people are gonna like and i want to mention that uh one of the entertainers that be my nephew marcus goyaso ak king charisma the hip-hop artist that rocked the so good yes he was uh this is the link if people can copy and paste it to cop his new album he just came out with his album today so we want to make sure that we uh we support the family so definitely support these artists they all have social media they all have youtube channels Many of them have products and services and albums and downloads. You can subscribe to so support the movement. So the only thing, Zulai, like, the yes. charisma on the release of his new album. Yes, yes. No, he's a, uh, you know that that family is very prolific. My brother, uh, his dad, has four full length CDs, about to come out with a fifth, and uh, they've always turned out a lot of music. Those guys, and then he's got two little younger brothers that are also very good that also rap, sing, and produce. So very talented part of the family. I don't know what happened to me. Um, And you're watching and listening to Found Translation. Zula, I must admit, I have a confession. What's that? Is that, you know, I go after every show. You know, y'all are very nice, say nice things about me. But, you know, you're too polite not to give me the critiques I probably deserve. So I go to the real executive producer of the show, my wife, Michelle. And I say, Michelle, (laughs) what can I do better? Because, you know, I just want, want this to blow up. We can kick Jimmy Kimmel in the butt. (laughs) <laughs> because you know what i'm gonna tell you what i say after every show you need to let zulai and the women talk more so this episode wow. <laughs> i am gonna specifically make sure that our co-host gets their just due so zulai let's start with the show last week i yeah. mean just your impressions i mean well let me ask you this question 
what how did it compare to what you thought it was going to be in terms of the anniversary show the the length you singing all the performers how we were going to mix in all these other people so tell me about what you expected and kind of what what shook out i'm going to be honest ray you know with a lot of the things that i do coming in with absolutely no expectation just to have fun and enjoy myself and you know i learned something from a good friend recently and she says to me when she enters into a new situation she says what can i be you know who can i be impressed by like you know what what can i learn from you today and that's really how i've taken not just last thursday and you know my contribution and participation in the show but um since you and I met, you know, that's what it's been, you know, I'm coming in with an open heart and an open mind and just a ton of positivity. And, and it's been really great. <laughs> wow. I thought I was the politician in the crowd. I tell you very, very nice. That was a good answer. I, what, what's a, come on, give me something. What surprised you about the show? Um, I, there had to be something. And, and it's not really a surprise, um, but to see, as many people as they did come together in support of you. And it's really beautiful to see, um, you know, when there's one person or a group of people who work so hard for the community and do so much for the community, but then how much, you know, nicer or much more beautiful it is when you see like that whole army stand up behind this group of people. And I was really moved by that. Yeah. And, you know, I've talked a lot about on the show that it, it's this show and this content that we do is as much a spiritual experience as anything. And I know that sounds really corny, but, but the, the 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 struggle I've had, and I'll just be straight up, but I've talked about it on the show. And my, and my close friend, Danny, is coming on later and others know this, that the struggle that I've had with this project over these years is, is A, I know this is what God wants me to do. There's no question about it. And people, you wouldn't have had that kind of support if that wasn't the case. Right. So yeah. last week verified that, but then the, 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 the anxiety about it, Oh, it needs to be bigger. 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 I need to blow up. Oh, you saw me on TV. I killed it. I know I could do this, and, 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 but it's, but I'm just being honest because I know you put me on ABC. I could kill it just like anybody else. We could do this. Like, I know that. So part of it is understanding that, that, that last week, verifies and reminds me because I got an ego like everybody else. I'm going to lie. Is that that was what it's important is that you guys and that love and that spirit and that energy and that positivity and that affirmation that even if it's, you know, 114 people that really love it and really get something out of it, what a blessing that is. You know, if, if I think it was like on Facebook live watching the show, it was like 800 people that watched. Imagine if we had all been in a theater together, like, you know, like it, it, you can get so caught up in thinking about a number and worrying about a number when you forget there's a person behind every every one, every digit. Mm -hmm. That's important. That's more important than any fame or, you know, whatever that means. Right. Right. And fame doesn't equate happiness. Zulai, um, I also thought the, the uh, here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was looking at the comments. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. No, Vanessa Cosons and my wife constructive criticism no question <laughs> the uh you know the other thing just from like i'll just be honest from a performance perspective and i think it was because of the spirit of the show i think we got everybody's best which I think so too yeah Absolutely. yeah so coz has been getting out of love uh you know she's got this new latino latino fan base that she uh people want to travel and, uh -huh. and and make an appearance and uh we've been in touch she's been you know they've all been very generous with the the love we've been sharing clips. I know Zulai, you've been, you're going to be pushing uh, a lot of people to support more of the YouTube channel. We've been putting a lot of the clips on there. So I know yes. there's going to be a bigger marketing push for you. Yes. And I, if I could please ask our friends, um, Christina, I know you're out there. Um, you know, if we could please just have our friends follow us and like us on YouTube, it would really mean so much for us to start building our presence um, on YouTube. Yes, and I'm putting and, and a lot of y'all have responded. I'm putting the link there on YouTube. A lot of y'all have responded, particularly because we've hit the clips with the inner with the with the acts. So if you liked Karen or you liked Frankie or you like Pablo Batista or you just wanna, you know, you have three, four minutes to see those clips. A lot of people have enjoyed it. Uh Zulai, so the you know, obviously it was a it was a rewarding experience. I think it taught me from a content perspective, we gotta do more of that. We gotta mm -hmm. diversify the show and also 
just do big events. I got one. I'm actually going to throw it out here. You have not heard this. So I want to, I'm going to put you in the spot and some of the people that are in the chat are going to be a part of this. Okay. I believe that in early June, in June, there should be a ladies night exclusive show that I'm not on that you and the women, the other collaborators just do yourselves. Oh, and just freestyle it. I think y'all should just do it. So I think people would enjoy that. You know what happened? Una noche de damas. It's a, it's a, that's a great idea. I think that's Absol- an excellent idea. Absolutely, it gives me a week off and let y'all. You know, it gives if it gives the audience also uh-huh. more insight on who you are. You know, yeah, Christina Dianelli. Well, you know, Christina's with it. Oh, everybody's down with it. Everybody's down with it. So y'all deserve that. And you know, hey, I think it'll mix up the show. And I think we have to do more experiment because. We had a we had a, a a fan reach out that wants to come on the show. So I said, well, you know, with all respect, like, what you gonna bring to the table? Vanessa's down. Um, what you gonna bring to the table? And she's a mixologist at, at the big nightclubs in L.A. And she goes, well, I don't have much to do now. I so love I- that idea. Yes, yeah, isn't that a good idea? Yes. So we're gonna have a and she's Puerto Rican of all things in California. Is that but uh, next week. No, well, we'll figure it out, but we, we have to we have to schedule it. But she's going to come on soon, yes. so and she's uh, way, all we could all gather our things and make make the drinks together with a mixologist. There you go. So why don't we, that should be a segment on the ladies' night show? Let's do it that way. Y'all can have that whole thing going on. I think that's really cool. Yeah, no, yeah. she's she's really uh, she's actually the voice. Remember Jim's cartoon? She's the voiceover. Okay. Yeah. So that's the gym again is the connection. Um, as always with our Hollywood friends. And you're watching and listening to Found in Translation Talk Show. Um, I actually wanna we wanna before we get into sort of our Mother's Day um uh commentary, obviously Mother's Day, hey, there's nothing more important than the mothers in our lives, the women in our lives, the caregivers in our lives. And we're gonna dedicate this show is dedicated to all of them. Uh, there's a few people, a few mothers, and a few people in particular that this show is especially dedicated to that we're going to talk about in a moment, but we did want to get into some of the news headlines and someone that's not only uh, really on the front lines um, of volunteerism and stepping up to the plate for the children in our community for the COVID-19 situation, but also someone that I think has a lot to say that wanted to help us uh, discuss some of the news headlines of the day uh, from the Lehigh Valley, uh, the found one of the founders of Unidos, um, Yamelisa Taveras. Yamelisa. Welcome back to Found Translation. Hi, Jamelisa. I think you're muted. You're on mute, Mama. Are there we on go. now? Yes, we All are. Right. How are you, dear? Hi, What's going on? Hi, Sulay. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me today. Oh, no, it's a pleasure. So for people that are hardcore fans of Found Translation, you know okay. Yamelisa's returning because Yamelisa is a, well, really a nationally recognized spokeswoman oh. <laughs> around awareness around insulin prices. And so she accompanied her congresswoman to Washington, D.C. in January for the last state of the union address. Remember when we would travel and like get on trains and stuff? Remember the old days? The and uh, old she, days. Yes. Two months so she, ago. <laughs> like I say, so she accompanied her congresswoman, uh, Congresswoman Wild, to be her special guest to highlight the importance of access to health care, access to afford not only insulin, but affordable health insulin price, uh, affordably costed out insulin. And it particularly impacts on the Latino community. Yeah, Melissa, why don't you remind people about that leadership? I know we're going to talk about Unidos in a second. Yes. But why don't you uh, talk a little bit about some of the work you do around that for the Hispanic community? Absolutely. So one of the things right now we are working on creating a forum um, to speak to the Latino community, to bring awareness to daycare facilities, schools, and let them know and educate them on warnings, basically warning signs about type 1 diabetes in children. And of course, the whole the whole purpose of me going to uh, Washington, D.C. for the State of the Union was because I am a diabetic. I was diagnosed when I was 10 years old, uh, being type one insulin dependent. I know, you know, from firsthand needing to ration my insulin, needing to struggle when I transition from one job to the next or when I go on vacation, when I plan things, how how I have to. Um, ration my insulin to be able to make it last. And then when the prices shift, how, you know, my body needs to get accustomed if my insurance won't cover the same brand. So all of those things. So giving, you know, giving a platform for individuals to be able to share their experience, that's the main thing. Bring awareness, education, and then those that are going through that struggle, being able to give them the resources to access uh, not only healthcare, 
but in you know their insulin and other medications. Because uh, when we speak of healthcare, we're speaking on all sorts of different life-sustaining medications and treatments that individuals are having a really tough time, especially uh, Spanish-speaking community. So us as Latinos, you know, when it comes to accessing a lot of the resources, we don't know where to turn. And I want to be able to to provide that that access point um, when it comes to getting into the doctor's appointments, when it comes to getting insurance, when it comes to um, being able to call the manufacturers of of their medications. And many of them are able to get discounted prices, but they're afraid to make those calls. So I'm definitely working with a lot of individuals to be able to get all of that information to our community. And we're hoping to get on a few different um, media media sources and provide that in Spanish. Absolutely. And you're listening to Melissa Taveras and Sulai Picarelli on Family Translation. Yeah, Melissa, you're, um, we're going to talk a little bit about Unidos yes. Fund um, and the work you're doing on the education side of this. Uh, but this whole COVID-19 situation, as our artists like Karen Jaime spoke about in her spoken word performance that we talked about on the show last week, and we've been talking about consistently the last few months, it really exposes the bigger issues around our healthcare system that are disproportionately impacting the Latino community. I heard a statistic today that they're estimating that for up to 40, the, now this is the government statistics, the, the CDC statistics, as many as 40% of the children that have been infected by COVID-19 are Hispanic in this country. So this is, if it's a crisis for the country, it is a, it is a mega crisis for our nation. So why don't you set us up for the, uh, for the news conversation here on Found Translation? Sure, absolutely. So later on in the show, we're going to celebrate the mothers in our lives. Is that where we're going next? Mm-hmm. Right. No, we're going to talk about the, well, that sets up the news uh, conversation about COVID. Great. Yes. I'm so sorry about that. It's okay. It's all right. You're right. And you're, you're absolutely right that we have to update um, people on where we stand with COVID-19. And over a million Americans have been infected and nearly, we have nearly 80,000 deaths while the problem spread around the country. The response is very uneven, and the push to reopen appears quite premature. Where are we exactly in this crisis? Well, I think there's a couple of things to this. One is that I think we have to use our common sense in our own eyes and ears and brains and don't get confused by the mixed messaging, a random conspiracy theory on YouTube that your cousin, that you know, you wouldn't take medical advice from shares. This is the reality. We don't have a vaccine, fam. So... Um, so until we have a very clear picture of the spread and the, the, the rate of infection goes down significantly, anything you do outside of what we're doing right now, what we're supposed to do right now, you're putting yourself at risk. So, you know, the, 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 and this goes to the point, one of the people that this show is dedicated to is Ahmad Arbery, the African-American gentleman that was killed senselessly, viciously, criminally, tragically, just for simply jogging uh, in his Georgia community um, by some men that, I mean, why they're not under the jail at this point is criminal in and of itself. But there's the discussion you're going to hear from the the Republican class, the messaging from the elite class is that, hey, we got to, you know, quote unquote, we got to be warriors. We can't let you know, the economy suffer, we got to get back to work and we have to normalize this situation. Well, the reality is they're not putting themselves on the front line of that situation. So what they're saying is your life, whether you're a, a meat pet plant worker or someone that works at Target or someone that drives a livery cab or, you know, or a school teacher or a nurse, your life is not as valuable as their stock dividends. So what we're what we're dealing with here, whether it's this vicious killing of this gentleman and this continued attack on black males by the criminal by 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 unlawful you know this unjust criminal justice system or this push to get us out there so other people can make money is about dehumanizing people and so i wanted to bring those up because they're very intertwined and yeah my lisa i know you're very engaged in these issues i want to get your perspective on it as a health advocate because at the same time they're saying oh you know we're 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 doing testing we're doing what we can this administration is pushing for the Supreme Court to kill Obamacare so less people can have health care. Right. And by the way, millions of people just lost health care. They got laid off. So, yeah, Melissa, I know you know you're very in tune with these issues. And these issues are one and the same because it's about valuing the lives of people like you, me, Zulai, and everyone. Most of you watching this less than others. 
Correct. I mean, it's it's definitely scary to see some of the, the headlines that are coming out and then even some of the comments that come through our, our timelines. Um, individuals speaking of, you know, all of a sudden, this is this is my right. I, I can choose if I expose myself. I can choose if I wear a mask. I can choose if this, I can choose this, if that. And it's an absolute shame that they, you know, don't realize that they're standing in a privilege that most of the country does not have. You know, when it comes to to healthcare, when it comes to just care in general, not not even accessing a hospital. But right now, I have plenty of friends that are displaying symptoms of COVID nineteen are are unable to be tested. They will not. They will not because either they are not in the in the right um, socioeconomic status to be able to just request it and have it done, or they just they're not an essential worker. Many many reasons. So when individuals go out there, put themselves out there and start speaking of, you know, everybody just needs to get back to work. You know, this is just a flu. It's it's sad. And like you said, dehuman, dehumanizing is absolutely that, um, because the other part that they don't realize is that many of them that are fighting, they're fighting to get back into their single office where they're by themselves working on a computer, making 70 to 120, 160 thousand dollars a year where they would have very little exposure. And then they're pushing for us to get also get back to work, which would be sharing 15 cubicles in a very small space. And that and, and they're looking at it as if it's the same. Obviously it's not the same. So it's it's just sad. It's sad to know that individuals are able to stand on these on these platforms, on these you know forums speaking and sharing about how everyone needs to just get back to work, get over it, stop asking for a handout. And the reality is right now, none of none of this is being handed to anyone. These are tax dollars that we have paid into this. Um, you know, and we know the numbers as far as what goes into, into welfare, what goes into corporate, you know, bailouts. And the numbers are totally skewed. Uh, things just don't add up. And well, I mean, it's it's real simple. I mean, you see what happened to his brother, Ahmad Arbery. We're gonna keep saying his name and honor him because, by all accounts, he's a good man. I mean, he. I mean, I mean, animals don't deserve that kind of death. You know what I'm saying? Like insects. I mean, it was just so cruel, inhumane. It was a, it was a very difficult video to watch. Uh, to be honest with you, anyone yeah. that was able to see it and and to even read just a little bit, um, and see this 25 year old jogging in his neighborhood. Who does that just because they they presumed him to? to be, you know, a burglar, a thief, or whatever it may have been, that it, it was it was a very sad, very sad situation, and there needs to be justice for Zula, him. So, so Zula, I know as a mother, you're thinking about the end of the school year. You're thinking about the summer. What's the health, what's the, the potential, you know, child care situation going to be like if and when we, have, we, we start working or making those kind of decisions? And then we got the fall. And we all know here, no, nobody here is naive. We know in September there's going to be no vaccine. And right. so thinking about people wanting to either, A, push our children in harm's way, or B, push ups in harm's way. We don't have child care if we're, we have the same situation at colleges and at K-12s through that we have right now, which I think is going to be pretty likely because third graders can't social distance. You know what I'm saying? So Zulai is a mother. I can imagine – there's a lot of preoccupations because there's just so much in the air. And because the leadership is so poor and doesn't seem to have our best interests at heart, certainly um, it, it can be very scary to figure out how some, there may be some very difficult decisions we have to make in the coming months. Uh, yes. And yes, you know, I am a mom. I have got two boys in our schools here in Philadelphia, one in kindergarten uh, the other in sixth grade, and it is absolutely something that my husband and I uh, talk about. Um, we are very hopeful that, you know, as restrictions are eased and lifted, that the schools and the school, the Department of Education, you know, they're implementing safety um, routines for, for our schools. I read a little bit about that um, this week in um I'm not. I'm not sure where, but Pedro Rivera, the Department of Education, had um, initially started talking about what a new school year would look like in the August. In August, and um, you know, I just think that we have to just 
rem remind ourselves that we're all in this together. We're all dealing with a brand new situation that we're none of us know, you know, what to do and just give each other, you know, like that little wiggle room to, you know, cause we are making mistakes and hopefully we're learning from them and implementing new strategies that um, will, you know, be fruitful later on. The last thing I want to say on this, then we want to talk about the, the solutions that people like Yamalisa and her team at Unidos up in Lehigh Valley are doing to, to support our children is that I think when you see in this incredible contradictions in our society, something like this can happen to Ahmed Arbery. And again, I'll repeat, this happened in what, February? And they still haven't even arrested anybody. February 23rd. Brought anyone from questioning. You see the protests and, you know, the falta de respeto. I mean, these, these protesters are getting at these state capitals, getting more and more aggressive. They're getting in police officers' faces. They're pushing, uh, uh, you know, police officers and state troopers. Ain't nobody arresting anybody. And then we see this imbalance in, in all these f ways. And I think that this is um, an opportunity for us to really understand that what are they angry about? You know, if you think about kind of that perspective, they control most of the government, the presidency, the Senate, you know, most of our governors, most of our state legislators, they are in power. Their ideology that has a real strong strand of white supremacy is in power. So what are they upset about? So, you know, so this is really speaking to the core of a of an insecurity that is on the bottom of this whole thing. All of these laws are in place just to try to help everybody be safe. So in World War II, we were unified around a common goal. There's been other moments in our history. What is different now? And I really want people to think about, honestly, why are we so are we such so different as a country? Or is it that unity means all of us have to be unified? <laughs> Because our country demographically is a lot different than it was 50 years ago when you had the minority population was under 70 percent. So, you know, is it is it that that unifying what all of us means you have to unify with us? And so there's there's some real deep seated issues here that we have to confront and we straight up about. And please, fam, don't believe the hype. Listen to trusted sources and use your own minds. Use your own minds to figure out what's going on here. It, this virus ain't going away. So don't do don't do anything. Put yourself arms away because. Some rich guy that's going to hide behind a palace tells you to do so. Yeah, Melissa, tell people a little bit about Unidos. We've had sure. the uh, the URL on the screen at unidosfund.org. We encourage people. And I'm not talking people that are struggling right now because a lot of our folks are laid off. They're struggling. People that are privileged enough to still working and have your regular money situation and you need to give up some cash for these kids. Tell us a little bit about the Unidos U.S. Fund and what you're doing in, in uh, the Allentown area to help our children. Yeah, Melissa. Yes. So the Unidos Foundation was founded last year. Um, the founder. And um, you have the URL right on there, unidosfund.org. And we have started, it was just in April, um, April 1st. So when everything started shutting down, one of the things that many of the parents in the Allentown School District started sharing was their, um, you know, they just didn't know how they were going to be able to transition to online learning. It is not something that we're used to, absolutely. And especially not our district. Uh, financially, we have been struggling for a long time. And when this occurred, the district had to really had no choice but to transition to online learning, especially once the schools were shut down officially for the rest of the school year. So we began on April first, just sending out messages um, from my from my Facebook, asking some of my friends, family, coworkers, if they would donate seventy five dollars to sponsor a family, get this family a Chromebook that the children can share until hopefully the school district will be able to, to provide additional information, um, additional Chromebooks to, to the other students. And I mean, it was amazing. By day 13, we already had raised $13,000. So we went from our original goal of 30 families increased to almost 100 within less than two weeks. And then now we are over 200 families that we are reaching with Chromebooks for, for the students to be able to get on their online learning platforms, and we are also getting access to hotspots. One of the other concerns in our area is connectivity. Many of the families do not have internet in the home. They only have cell phones. You can't do schoolwork on a cell phone. So right now, you know, what we have been asking, continue to ask anyone that is able to donate, please go on our website, unidosfund.org, and make a donation. It doesn't have to be the full $75 to sponsor a family. It could be whatever you're able to do. But right now, we are getting computers, 
hotspots, headphones, flash drives to the students that have successfully now transitioned to fully online learning in a matter of a couple weeks when most of the school districts take a couple years to be able to do that transition. So the Anton School District was not in that process. Many of the surrounding school districts were, and of course, it's because a lot of the gerrymandering and, and you know, inequality in our area also. Uh, so our schools basically sits in the middle of many school districts and, and, you know, areas that are affluent. So they were able to transition with no problem. The schools were able to provide Chromebooks and computers for the students or iPads. The Allentown School District was, was not able to. Um, however, they did just get an emergency fund released just in the last couple of days of over a little over $9 million to be able to cover a lot of these expenses. But the families themselves still need this now. Um, the school district trans transitioned officially, and they're now about a week and a half in, almost two weeks in to the online school. And many of the families still don't have computers. So we are doing mm -hmm. our best to reach as many as possible, but we still need your help. So again, unidosfund.org, we will greatly appreciate any donation that you're able to do. And that's our education piece. Uh, we are also providing PPE to essential workers, um, the police department, pharmacies, hospitals, clinics, nursing homes, to be able to keep our first line of workers safe. So we're providing masks, gloves, and all of that is coming thanks to Trilu Media Studios. So we're definitely working together. And our motto or slogan is live here, invest here. We are one. And we really stand by that. So well, yeah, yeah, Melissa, we're so proud of you. And we were proud to contribute uh, and raise awareness about this, this inequity that needed to be addressed. And we're doing it ourselves in our own community by y'all being the sort of the official charity of last week's party. Y'all yeah, were associated with quite a party uh, last week. Oh, that was a good time. Wow. That was amazing. Who, who was your, give me a highlight. I know you were enjoying the show. You know what? It, it, it would be absolutely unfair to try to pick one. I mean, yeah. Zulai did amazing. Yeah. Um, but everything, you know, you had, you had poetry and spoken word and you had singers and just all different types of music rappers. It, it was amazing. It was yeah. absolutely beautiful um, to see everyone come together, to see everyone, of course, celebrating with you and supporting you. And I was so happy to be part of that audience. And no, I appreciate that. No, and, and we, we were very happy. We're going to continue to support unidosfund.org. So for the podcast listeners, y'all need to send, go to unidosfund.org, make a donation. You know, this is for people that aren't from the East Coast or know this community, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Billy Joel sung about it a long time ago when it was kind of your quintessential, you know, sort of old industrial city. It still is in some ways, but it's become very diverse. It's a probably majority at this point, Latino community and the oh, school yes. district children are overwhelmingly Hispanic kids. So again, we're looking at the inequities, depending on your zip code, you're a few miles away. You have a whole different reality oh, just absolutely. in that own community. So, you know, why should one child, and this isn't about anybody being better. Why should one child have all the resources, Wi-Fi in this world, in this country with the wealth that we have, why shouldn't everyone have access to Wi-Fi? I mean, just think about that for a second. So, yeah, Melissa Tavera from UnidosFund.org. Thank you so much for your support. We want you to hang. We let, You're welcome to be part of this conversation about Mother's Day. Uh, Zulai, why don't you tee up the next segment, let people know how they can uh, support the show, and then we'll bring on our other very special guests. Thank you so much um, to Unidos Fund for coming on. I just want to exhortar a nuestro público una, una vez más a que apoyen, por favor, a unidosfund.org. Um, but yes, for Found in Translation Talk Show is stepping up on your YouTube channel, like we were mentioning before. So please, if um, you're able to go up in YouTube and um, like our page and um, let's see what else. You can catch full videos there audio episodes of uh, Found in Translation, as well as clips of your favorite moments, exclusively at youtube.com slash raise podcast. Uh, don't forget to support Found in Translation as a podcast by subscribing subscribing everywhere you can download um, your podcast, uh, iTunes, Google Podcast, app for Android users. So we'll wait for you there. Yes, and uh, thank you so much, July. And, um, you know, Mother's Day's around the corner, and you know, in our especially in our culture, we would be remiss without dedicating a segment of the show to the wonderful mothers in our life. And you know, we want to give love 
uh, not only to all the mothers. I know, Zulai, you were talking about how your mother is uh, still a very vibrant woman, which is uh, great to hear. And uh, that, well, tell us a little bit about your mom. Well, my mother, um, her name is Noemi. My mom, she lives in, in Puerto Rico. And, you know, I'm sure you'll meet her at some point. Um, but yeah, like I was telling you before, she's in her 60s, but she is very vibrant. And, you know, she loves to, um, you know, wear makeup and, and look nice and smell nice. Está bien, está bien. Good for her. And she's, you know, she's fun in that way. And she's the kind of mom where, nena, no, 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 vete a regla, te ponte bonita. You know, she encourages you to, even when you're not feeling your absolute best to always, you know, try and look your best for yourself. <laughs> no, and, uh, and a lot of people, particularly in the Philadelphia area, are familiar with my mother, Sonia Collazo, not only a, a wonderful person, uh, but a great activist in her own right. She worked for the city of Philadelphia as a neighborhood mediator for over 30 years. Uh, she was a kindergarten teacher. She did a lot of community service-oriented jobs, very involved in the local Catholic church. She found that every time we would move, she would found the Spanish mass at the Catholic church. So I, I think she that. found it for my life, I believe, um, and still very involved in her faith to this day. And uh, just a, a wonderful person. I tell people I get a lot of my personality from my dad, uh, but my values and kind of uh, my my foundation, especially as a Latino, um, come from my dear mother. I'm sorry? Does your mom live in Philly? Or does yeah, she- yeah, yeah. She still lives in Philadelphia. She lives with my youngest brother. The guy that was on the show last week, Mario, she lives with them. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, that's been a journey um, because she's, you know, she's in her early 70s now and you know, they're, they're, they're getting older, you know, so you have to, they have a different level of, they can't have the same independence as they once did. So, you know, there's a, there's a nev- level of caregiving that, that my brother, um, I'm blessed to to take the lead on. Um, but she's a wonderful person. She's watching my biggest fan. And I just want to, again, give love to all the mothers out there. I wanted to bring two people talk about mothers and people that were energy that they brought to us. Um, I wanted to bring two very special friends, of mine, and I, I say friends, but they're really brother and sister of mine, uh, to come on the show because they wanted to dedicate, and we dedicated this show to the memory of uh, Katia Maria Capellan, um, a dear woman. She was like a, a mother to me, my, one of my New York moms when I lived in New York City. And I wanted to bring them on because they have a message. And, um, you know, I, I would have, I wanted them to share this moment, um, to share the memory of her as we approach Mother's Day. So, again, Two of my two of my brother and sister here, Danilo Rodriguez and Anna Rodriguez. Welcome to Found in Translation. Hi guys. So bro. What's going on? So um Anna, my big sis. I know. With you. Tell us about um let the audience know about Katia Maria Capian, who she was and what you like to share about your wonderful mother. Well, um, what I can say really about my mom is that she was a very dynamic person. Um she loved all of our friends as her own kids, especially you, Rafi. <laughs> She's like, ¿Dónde está mi Rafaelita? ¿Dónde está? <laughs> and, you know, um, she was a, a bigger-than-life personality. Uh, if you met her, you, would, you, you wouldn't even question. You'd be like, oh, yeah, everybody had a story about my mom uh, because she was just um, a comedian, she she always made people laugh. That was her thing. She loved to make people laugh. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we we lost her before before uh, Mother's Day. But, um, but we honor her, you know. I know that. Uh, uh, Danny, talk to me about how, the toughness of your mom. And I want to say that in a loving way, because, yeah. you know, she, on one level, she was the life of the party. And I literally say that because one of, I mean, my memories of her was having a good time. And we had so many wonderful memories in New York and in, at Santo in, in Dominican Republic at your wedding, Danny. That was such a great memory uh, that I always cherish. And thank you, Anna, for sharing the photos uh, of, of that time with us. But, you know, I can just imagine all of the, 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 the challenges she had as an immigrant woman in this country, raising a family, um, uh, having, you know, uh, you know, just, I mean, what a, what a strong woman because she went through all of it and, um, you just never got the sense of the struggle she had had, but I know, I know she had a lot of resilience, brother. She did. Um, and if you look at her life, um, she was one of 17 children in her family. <clears throat> and, uh, she, she took care of a lot of her 
um, her siblings growing up because their their mother had passed away and she kind of took and took the role of the um, of the the caregiver and provider. Um, so she started from a very young age taking care of children, and then um, she married my dad, who was a widower, who had seven children of his own, and took care of seven children after taking care of 16 other children and um then had anna my brother jose who um we we lost in um in in march to cancer and myself and she took care of us so you know if you count the numbers that's like almost 30 children that's a lot of caregiving. That she raised. What an incredible person. Wow. So, I, I, you know, wow. I'm struggling with three. I'm struggling with two kids. And, I'm struggling you know, with three. <laughs> so talk, about, talk about toughness, you know, and that's, that's, that's what she brought to the table. Um, so that, that, that speaks volumes. I don't have to really say any more about her. Toughness. And not only toughness uh, in terms of raising children, Raphael, but also in the, in the fact that she was an immigrant to this country, only spoke Spanish when she got here, um, managed to, to put herself in a, in a position to learn English so that she could help us. Um, we lived in the projects in New York city and, you know, one of the toughest times, you know, back in the seventies and the eighties and the nineties, you know, to, to get three kids to go to college and, and get them to become successful prof- professionals I mean, it just says so much about who she was as a person. You know, That's right. Well. You know, the other thing I wanted to, and Emma, you can talk about this, is that uh, the other thing I think, first of all, I just think about the energy and the life that she had. And the other thing that I always remember your mom and she taught me was, man, she was honest. <laughs> she had no filter. <laughs> and, you yeah. know, I could, uh, you know, at some levels, a little shocking when you're like <laughs> the friend of the kids and you're bouncing around and she's talking about all kinds of stuff that seems a little TMI ish. Yeah. But, I mean, but but what an open book and what a, how many I can only imagine how many life lessons you learned from her having that kind of personality growing up. I mean, yeah. just as a mom, um, you know, it's hard. You don't cut that. There's no rule book. There's no, there's no <laughs> instruction manual. Um, and, you know, growing up, you're always like, I'm never going to be like my mom. She was mean and she was this. And you 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 kind of take a step back when you are in that position of raising children and say, Hmm, yeah, now I see why she did that, (laughs) you know? And although we, we are in different positions than, than she is and uh, she was, um, it's still a lot of her teachings and a lot of the honesty is needed in terms of, now she was a little over the top on the honesty. I I agree with you on that, but uh, (laughs) <laughs> um, but, you know, just being honest with your kids as to, you know, what's expected of them, you know, what are the challenges they're going to face in life and that they have to work twice as hard sometimes as other people because they don't look like them. And so, you know, but you know what, you know what, I got to I got to say something about about that frankness and that honesty, especially in the environment that we find ourselves in today. She didn't she didn't find room for the BS, right? So that to me, be, just because it may have been her upbringing, it may have been how you know how her life went, but she found time to be valuable, and she did not want to waste that time on things that were unnecessary. That's right. She was always present, and she was always in the moment, and she was always there with you, and you were there with her, whether you wanted to be or not. <laughs> You were there with her. And that speaks right. volumes to how we may want to think about we're at a point where we're putting we're hitting the pause button, you know. I call this a reboot. I call this an opportunity for people to take stock and to kind of look and say, Where where's the BS? Where's the stuff that I need to cut out? Where's the stuff that that's wearing on my life that I need to get rid of? And, you know, and, and live a more thoughtful and purposeful life. And she provided that 
for us. She provided that framework and that structure for us. And I am applying that every day now, especially in this moment where we, where, where we find ourselves in as a society. Because there's no room for the, the BS. And we need the time that's spent on other people trying to take our time to be with our families, to be present, to be able to be honest, to be able to tell people how we feel. And that's an important lesson. Yeah, she, um, and we're talking to, I mean, a dear brother and a dear sister to me, Anna and Daniel Rodriguez, talking about their dear mother, uh, Katia Maria Capellan, who unfortunately we lost recently, but we didn't lose her because she always going to be in our heart. And, you know, I didn't, you know, obviously, you know, it's easy to make a make a light moment on Mother's Day. But at the same time, I, I don't think of this. It is sad, obviously, on some degree, because it's recent. You know, we just had the viewing online last we- weekend, which I was so fortunate to be invited to and a part of and connect with a lot of old family and friends. But, you know, I know there's a lot of people out there that are that are going to be like Anna and Danilo that, you know, their mom's going to be with them in the heart, but won't be with them physically Sunday. And I know that's that's got to be difficult. Fortunately, I've not gone through that experience in my life. But um, but I want everyone to know that whether they have their mother with them, obviously cherish them um, every day. And if they're no longer with us, cherish them. And because they've given them so much. And I just think Anna and Danny, you know, I mean, how much I admire you two on a personal level. I mean, I mean, just 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 total. I mean, just solid people in every way. I mean, brilliant, accomplished, uh, spiritual fun god i had so much fun with you too having you know and y'all talk i mean really anna you know um i don't know if you know this anna but um i just found out in the last i reconnected well not really connected for the first time in my life turns out i do have an older half sister i don't know if you knew that you and i have had that conversation much respect to jessica um who uh, it's a long story but uh she's a few years older and we connected recently uh she lives in northern virginia great person she's probably watching right now but before i i connected with jessica after, after the first 45 years of my life you were always my big sister girl you you always showed me the way i was always jealous because i said daniel always knows how to talk to girls and he knows how to <laughs> dance and he he's so cool because he had Dana to show him the way so all of that comes out all that life all that goodness all that energy all that brilliance comes you know from your parents wonderful people and so it's it's uh i know it's a sad time but it's also a time to celebrate their lives and so um i want to put you on the queue because we have a bit of a, a, a special thing we wanted to share uh, i don't know if y'all saw last week's show i know you were busy obviously but zilai piccarelli not only is my coach but he's actually a singer and so for your mother Katia, and for all the mothers out there She's going to sing a little something for y'all. So just uh, let's just bring Zulai on, on stage here. So we'll put you on the queue. We'll, we'll put her in the spot. So Zulai, um, are you ready? I'm ready. And, you know, listening to Danilo and Anna talk about their mom and, you know, speak on how she was always present. And that's right there as, you know, mom for me is one of the things that I think that I have struggled with the most because you know, you're always running, you're always trying, you're always, you know, trying to keep people alive. Yeah. Um, but am I present? And I, I want for my kids to say that, you know, mom was present um, with us. So yeah. that was really touching, really special. And I do um, want to sing the song. It's in Spanish. I love singing in Spanish. You guys know. And um, this song se llama Señora, Señora. And it's special because I sang this song. My mom was um, a single mom. And I sang this song to my mother on my wedding day. So I hope, I cried a lot that day. I hope, I don't cry now. But... Te me diste tu vida, tu amor y tu espacio. A ti te cargaste en tu vientre, dolor y cansancio. A ti que peleaste con uñas y dientes, valiente en tu casa y en cualquier lugar. A ti no sufriste de gris. Señora, señora, a ti mi guerrera invencible, a ti luchadora. 
luchador incansable, a ti mi amiga constante de todas las horas. Tu nombre es un nombre común, como las margaritas. Siempre en mi boca presencia constante en mi mente. Let's get in and Danny a little back on, on the air here. Thank you. you. It's beautiful. The other thing you don't know, Zulai, is you talk about some musical people right here. Let me tell you <laughs> how, how wonderful these two. Well, first of all, so there's a lot here. God, we could go back. But Zulai, so this is how, this is how appropriate that was that you sung. So not only did me and Danilo back in the days were club promoters in New York, we used to, we used to get it in, and he was a DJ. So I was like, the like I'd be the door guy, and he was the DJ. We were a good team. Coco Rico Productions, much respect. The people that know about that know. But Anna, let me tell you. So, so Anna, one day, I don't know, we were one of the parties lower east side, and Anna was like, Mira, Rafi, con respeto y amor y todo. You can dance, but you dance merengue y bachata like a Puerto Rican. I'm going to teach you how to do it like a Dominican. <laughs> so, <laughs> so after that, I was in good shape. Let me tell you, I go up, uptown, I go to the heights, I can get it in. So, so these two, I mean, uh, Anna and Danny, just any thoughts on the song? I mean, just amazing. Be- you have a beautiful voice. My mom was also a singer. Yeah. Very appropriate. Yes, she, um, well, she, you know, she she sang everywhere she went, whether it was invited or not. She always, if, if there was a mic, she took it and she started uh-huh. singing, you know. Um, I sing, my daughter sings. Uh, we are a very musical family. Danilo played the tuba too. I don't know if anybody knows that, but <laughs> I didn't want to bust them on today. But yeah, I knew about that. But... No, that's a very uh, you know. Yeah, I played the clarinet. I, I was a drum major. I mean, we could go on. I mean, we could go on. Oh yeah, no, Danilo. You know, people catch Danilo on social media. He may get an occasional freestyle Friday or something with the the DJ. And he does his thing. So, yeah. so uh, Danilo, music was a big part of your mom's life and a big part of the Rodriguez life. Uh, yeah, I've always said that that. Um, we are a creative family. Um, and thank you be- very much for the, for the song. It was beautiful. Um, you know, our, I think, I think we, our, our generation sort of had creativity sort of as our, um, as our base, um, you know, and our kids, I think our kids are going to benefit from that. So, um, you know, it's it's uh, it, it's a it's a it's a big part of who we are and a big part of our lives. So we really appreciate the the creative um, piece. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Yeah, I, mean, I wanted to bring Yamalisa back into this conversation. First of all, I know Yamalisa's like, man, R- Rave still be hanging with Dominicans. He be hanging tough. So that's the first thing. But the second thing, Yamalisa is that uh, <laughs> I know that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. It's great. That's what I'm saying. A good we got a ball in here. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. But uh, just any thoughts about? The moment, and I know you wanted to shout out your mother as well. Absolutely. I mean, first of, I mean, it sounds like your mother was absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And July, that was a beautiful rendition. Um, and I can so relate to all of what you guys are saying. I mean, my mom is that bright makeup, big hair, 
loud. You know, she has been on TV pretty much her whole life. Uh, she founded a magazine, a newspaper, and is now um, hosting, a, it's called the Golden Latin Awards, celebrating 22 years. And it's something that is absolutely beautiful. Her name is Isa Pereira. And she has won Microfono de Oro. She was at the Soberanos a couple of years ago. Soberanos, nice. Yes. So Danilo's never invited me to that. I don't know why. <laughs> we, yes, haven't but, we haven't rolled. That's the one part that we haven't rolled to together, brother. I haven't even been invited. To it. <laughs> she was the Cassandras for many, many years, and then the name was changed a few years back. So she was yeah. invited to that, and she's just an amazing individual. And I'm so proud to call her my mom. And as you're singing the song, you know, I'm thinking, of course, of her and of my grandmother, who I lost last year, right before Mother's Day as well. And it's it's a it's a difficult time, but you guys, you know, you're you're living, you know, you're you're carrying her memory, which is absolutely beautiful. So I'm I'm very happy to be here with you guys and be able to see that live. Yeah, Melissa, I'm so glad because Inma Salter, a great friend to the show, mentioned in the chat that we also want to shout out the grandmothers. Yes. Uh, and the great grandmothers and the right. other, you know, and the and the larger extended family. So, of course, that's a that's an incredible blessing. Danilo, anything else you'd like to say about your mother? Anything else you'd like to share with the final translation community? Danilo, over the years, has been on the show to talk about technology, uh, to talk about hip hop. It was we had a great episode uh, several years ago when unfortunately the fife passed away. But we got to talk hip hop with Kim Osorio, my brother. And so, Danilo, you'll see on the show on occasion on on uh, issues that he cares about. He works in the sports world now. Um, but anything else, Danny, you want to share about uh, your, uh, Doña Kati or, or this moment? Just, um, you know, to live larger than life. Um, we all, you know, we only have one, one of these things. So I think my mother lived her life the way um, I think most of us should. So, um, you know, we, we, and we're grateful to you, Ralph, for, for bringing us on and, and being able to honor her memory and, um, you know, just, just be able to speak, um, about her one, once again. So we really appreciate that. Absolutely. Anna, just, uh, big sis, any, any, uh, any final words you wanted to share? Well, um, firstly, uh, you know, as mothers, I think that there are, they are the first teachers, uh, uh, for our children. Um, they are the first teachers. It's teacher appreciation week. And um, now everyone's a teacher. Welcome to our world. No, I, I, think, I think I've got enough credits here. <laughs> this homeschooling stuff. Maybe Virginia. Can I get a certificate in Virginia? Yes. Make some hustle uh, money on the side. Yes. <laughs> and so um, honor your teachers, uh, especially your moms, because they were the first teachers. And um, also uh, gather your history. I think that that's one of the things that I have learned throughout this experience is that, you know, once my mom passed and I had to write her story, I was like, wow, I didn't really know much pre myself, you know? And so we only look at our moms when, you know, through our lens, through our eyes and who they were to us, but they were people before us, you know, they were, they were friends and, and, you know, aunts and whatever they, you know, they did before us. And, so gathering that information was just so valuable, so impressive, um, you know, getting connected with your family members again and, and sharing photos and just those types of things. Is, it's just some of the things I encourage for people to do, especially on Mother's Day, it, it, make, it a, make it a project, make it, make it something fun to do is during this quarantine while we're all stuck in the house, you know, dive into the old pictures and, and, and call your family members or, or set up a, a group where you guys can share photos and, and enjoy the time together reminiscing about, you know, the past and, and, and your family ties. Right. I always say that about uh, when talking to my wife about like, just like documenting thing and moments. And she's like, Oh, you always taking pictures. I said, let me tell you something. <laughs> when you're a kid, the best thing you, you get a little older, the best thing you love to do is look at the old pictures and all you, the only thing you complain about is there ain't more of them. So right. I try to document everything. And, you know, now the technology and clouds and everything, you, you know, it's a little different. But, um, you know, that that is so important. And, you know, I think also, too, from a Latino perspective, that's important because we got to ground our children in, in the stories. You know, Jeffrey Vargas is a national motivational speaker, comes on the show a lot, say it's OK to let. The, the your kids know now about the struggles of the other generations you know they have to understand that you know this was this was uh your these privileges were not 
just given out. You know, our, our other generations really had to earn our place here and, and really kind of pave a road for us. So um, that's that's and it's so beautiful as always. Those comments as July. Thank you so much for singing and sharing your gift. Anything else you want to share you. as we wrap up this edition of the show? Again, you know, you come in with an open heart, just waiting to be surprised, and <laughs> really are. Thank you so much. It was wonderful meeting you guys, and thank you for sharing with us um, Gatia's life and experience. And now I wish I would have met her. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank well, you. you know, thank as, you. As we wrap up the show, I just wanted to say, first of all, how much you know, how much I love and care about you, you both, and the whole family, of course, and all your children, and all your extended loved ones. Uh, and you know, the, the, to that, to the points, especially what you just said, July is that think about in this moment and in Danilo with the people that are watching this and you just, even the comments, people all over the country, all over the world have been impacted by your mom again. And, uh, Carlos in New Hampshire, Maddie in Miami, just thinking about some of our friends and, and audience members that are chiming in. So again, I just wanted to thank y'all for, you know, the, the, the strength to do this. Cause I don't know if I would have had the strength to do this, frankly. Um, and uh, and sharing her blessing with us as we approach Mother's Day and grounding us about what's really important because, and look, these are all, everyone on screen is an overachiever and highly successful, and we get so caught up, as you said, Zulai, about just, you know, keeping up with the Joneses sometimes, as you said, Danilo, we need to reset and really take this time to understand what's really important. And what's really important is that that spirit that, that mothers and loved ones like Sonia Katia left us Thank you all so much for being a part of this edition of Found Translation. Again, Feliz Dia de las Madres. Um, don't believe the hype, fam. Keep your families protected. Wear these masks. Stay distant. That's what we got StreamYard for, fam. We'll, we'll keep in touch. Don't worry about it. Don't import stuff. FaceTime your people. And p- please, protect yourselves. Protect your loved ones. And again, thank you all so much for being part of this beautiful episode of Found Translation. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Happy. Thank you. Love you, bro.